In this video, we're going to be discussing the adjoint of a matrix and then briefly mentioning Cramer's rule, which is another method for calculating the inverse of a matrix, but this time using determinants. So something that we need to recall is what a cofactor is. The cofactor of a matrix, A, is plus or minus, with the sign depending on i and j, the determinant of a smaller matrix, and that's the matrix that you get by deleting the i-th row and the j-th column. So given any pair of indices i and j, like row i, column j, you produce a cofactor. And that means from this you can actually form an entire matrix of cofactors. We'll work out an example in a minute or two. Now if you go and you take the transpose of the cofactor matrix, so putting the rows where the columns go and putting the columns where the rows go, then you get a special matrix called the adjoint. So by definition, the adjoint of A is just the transpose of the cofactor matrix. And in the cofactor matrix, you've got n times n different cofactors to work out, and each one of them is a determinant. We should do an example to get a flavor for what this cofactor matrix and the adjoint actually look like. So for this example, let's take a three by three matrix A. And uh, notice here that when we go and calculate the signs for all these cofactors, it's gonna be with the following sign pattern, plus minus plus, minus plus minus, and plus minus plus. That'll help us with the calculations. So over here in the margins, let's work out the first few of them. All right, so for our first cofactor, that will be C11. So that means we're gonna be taking a smaller matrix where we delete the first row and column. So I would take my matrix A and I would cross out column one and row one. And that leaves me with a smaller matrix, minus two, one, zero, minus two. My sign, my sign chart says that I'm gonna be taking plus. So I have plus the determinant of this smaller matrix minus two, one, zero, minus two. And that works out to be four minus zero, which is four. So that becomes the first entry of my cofactor matrix. C11 is gonna populate a larger matrix with uh, nine entries, and the first entry in the cofactor matrix C will be four. If we jot down all of the rest of these, there's eight more to work out, you get a bunch of numbers for these cofactors. And these are gonna go into the different spots in the cofactor matrix. Our cofactor matrix is then C, 412, 603, 712, using all of these numbers. And then we flip the rows to the columns and the columns to the rows to take its transpose, and that gives us the adjoint of A. So it's another three by three matrix. Now the point of doing all this work with the adjoint is because there's a rule called Cramer's rule. And Cramer's rule tells you that adjoints can be useful for calculating inverses. And the point is that if you have an invertible matrix to start with, then you can calculate A inverse by taking the adjoint of A, as long as you scalar multiply by one over the determinant of A. So if you're keeping track, there's a lot of determinants to calculate here, but sometimes your matrices are small enough or sparse enough to where this is less effort than doing Gaussian elimination to calculate the inverse. So if we take our previous three by three matrix for a sample calculation, we've already gone to the effort of calculating all of those cofactors. And so in order to find A inverse, we would just need to calculate the determinant of our original matrix A. So our original matrix was this one, and then you can do a little cofactor expansion in order to calculate its determinant. Here, I'm taking cofactor expansion along the first column. So I have minus one times the smaller two by two matrix, and then I have plus one coming from the uh, entry in spot three one times this smaller matrix, and that works out to be three. So for my entire inverse, I would have 1 over 3 times the adjoint that I calculated before, and that would give me A inverse. The 2 by 2 matrices are a good place where you can check the validity of Cramer's rule. So if you take a, a generic 2 by 2 matrix, A, given by A, B, C, D, you can see this in play. So here, because you have a 2 by 2 matrix, what are the cofactors? Well, if, you're, if you take your matrix A and cross out the first row and column, that leaves you with a single number, D. So your cofactor is just going to be recording these four entries with sign. So in particular, our, our four cofactors are going to be plus D, minus C, minus B, and A. And so our cofactor matrix becomes D minus C minus B, A. And when you take the adjoint by flipping the rows to the columns, you get D minus B minus C, A. And then A inverse is going to be 1 over the determinant times the adjoint 
But of course, that's exactly our two by two formula for the inverse of a matrix. It's one over AD minus BC, where you've interchanged the rows on the diagonal and taken the signs off the diagonal. So when you have that quick formula for two by two matrices, what you're actually looking there is an instantiation of Kramer's rule.